Chapter 8, Section 3 is all about activity series of an element. Before we get started again, press pause, try these out. Okay, hopefully you've got an answer down there where they're completed and balanced the best you can. These are both single displacement reactions. If your first one looked like that, nice job. That's exactly correct. The aluminum kicked the zinc out and then we're balanced there with our coefficients. However, if your bottom one looked like that, okay. If you're looking like this right here, then let's watch and we'll talk later, okay? Because there's a reason here that this top reaction reacted, but the bottom one did not, and that's all about the activity of these elements. Before we get started, take these down. These are the notes for activity series. Basically, an element's activity is referred to as the element's readiness to react with other substances. An activity series, which we'll give you later, lists elements by their activity. For metals, the greater activity means a greater ease of loss of electrons. Remember, metals are those losers that like to get rid of the electrons. And then for non-metals, a greater activity means they have a greater ease of taking in electrons. The order in which the elements are listed is usually determined by single displacement reactions. And that's what we're going to do through here, a couple of single displacement reactions. On the list, the most active elements are placed at the top of the series, and the least active elements are placed at the bottom. Anything above can replace anything below it, but anything below cannot replace anything above it. That doesn't make much sense. Write it down, and we'll do a couple examples. Your book looks like this. On page 286, here is the activity series of elements. And it's got the activity and then a couple other conditions. For our purposes, on your support sheets, it looks like this. We're concerned with these metals, the halogens down here, and then also uh, we've thrown hydrogen in right here for you. So up top, the metals, lithium is the most active that we're, we're going to worry about. Gold is the least active. And then for our halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodide. Remember, these will be on your support sheet. You'll have these at tests. No need to memorize them, but it is good to know them. Okay, so back to the beginning. Why did the top one react? Well, if you see here, aluminum is above zinc. Okay, so aluminum is above zinc. So that gives us that nice single displacement. Aluminum can come in and kick out the zinc. However, on our purposes, we've got sodium here. Cobalt isn't even on our list. Let's take this and look at the one from your book. Sodium here, cobalt here. So cobalt is below sodium. So when cobalt tries to replace sodium, it does not happen and you get no reaction. That is the reason that one does not react but the first equation does because sodium is more active than cobalt. Okay, a couple practice. Here's what I want you to do. Press pause, try these on your own, try and see if they first work, then balance them, okay? Um, before I would go though, I'd make sure I had my activity series in front of me. Oh, there it is. Okay, so leave that in front of you. Try them. If they work, make them work. Write the proper uh, products and then balance it. If they don't work, just write no reaction. Okay, hopefully you've tried them a little bit. Now I'm going to go through. I've got zinc here, and that's an anion. I know the zinc, or excuse me, that's a cation. The zinc ion is a 2 plus, and if I break up hydrochloric acid here, I've got my cation hydrogen and my anion chloride. Come on over here and I can see that zinc is above hydrogen here. So this single displacement reaction should work out. So that will give me zinc chloride, 
two there to balance out the charges, and hydrogen gas, a two there because it's my diatomic. Now let's make sure that's balanced. My ions here, my ions, okay. One zinc, one zinc, feeling good there. Two chlorides, one chloride, let's fix that. Let's put a two here. That gives me two hydrogens, two hydrogens there. I'm happy. Next for chloride, um, add to copper bromide. Let's first check it out. Chloride is actually an anion. So chloride, anion, copper. I know this is actually copper one because I need no bromine or bromide ion is negative one and they bounce each other out evenly there. And look at this, this situation I have a single displacement with the anion displacing, the anion. So I've got to check chlorine and bromine. If I come over here to my list, I see chlorine. Chlorine is down in the halogens here and look what chlorine is sitting on top of Chlorine is sitting on top of bromine. And so if chlorine is above bromine, that means chlorine is more active. So the chlorine can displace the bromine and take its place. So let's rewrite this. That gives me copper with the chlorine, one and one balanced out, and my bromine. And I've got my Brinkhoff diatomic there. So let's go ahead and Balance her out. One copper, one copper, happy there. Two chlorines, one chlorine, uh-oh. Let's take care of that. That now gives me two chlorines, two chlorines, but two coppers. Let's go ahead and fix that. Two coppers, that gives me two bromines and two bromines on this side. So we are balanced and happy. On to the third one, I have lead, which is a cation and iron, which is a cation. So let's go on over to my list, and I see, let's get these guys purple, I see lead here, and then I see iron above it. So that tells me when the lead goes to displace the iron, the iron is actually more active, and so that will not happen, and I get no reaction. That's basically it. It's looking at the cations and anions and finding out which one's more reactive. And then if you look at your uh, activity series, if it's above, it's more reactive or more active. If it's below, it's less active. And that's what you use to guide you. Before next class, if you want to try, you've got four problems here. Same idea, use your activity series, go back to that uh, uh, slide if you need to and write it down or use it in your support sheet or your yellow sheets and try these out and we will go over them later. Thank you.